You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Salem After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Salem After Show. Hey everybody, welcome into another episode, the final episode in season one here on AfterBuzz TV for Salem, episode 13, the season finale, of course entitled All Falls Down, and apparently if we don't do the after show, they're going to keep doing Salem episodes, so if we never actually, uh, you know, admit that this is the season finale, we'll just get a few more, I'm just kidding, this is it, <laughs> I'm pretty sad about it, but it's okay because we have a lot to talk about today. Welcome in everybody, I'm your host Bobby DeMiro, with of course Marissa Serafini, Hello. next to me and across the table, Miss Anna Koppel, hey. and Jesse Owen. Hello. Alright ladies, so our last time together for, who knows, a long time, because season two starts in 2015, at least and on Salem. April. This is sad. Um, where on earth do we begin? So much happened tonight. I mean, a lot of surprises. I, I have to say that uh, there were things that I thought were going to happen, but didn't, and then things that I thought never would happen, but did. So a right. lot... A lot, finale, yeah. a lot of deaths, a lot of deaths, a lot of murders, a lot of questions that are going to be asked. And we will get to all those questions, obviously, as this show progresses. But let's start with Mary, and let's start with the Grand Right. Um, what about Mary here? Because we see a lot. The first scene we see, of course, is the follow-up from last episode, which was when she went into the woods with John. And mm -hmm. he then confronts her and says, you know, you're one of them. You're a witch or whatever, which I thought was interesting because last week when we had Sammy Hanratty, she said the initial line was, you're a witch, I believe. And then they change that, and he says, you're one of them, which is essentially the same thing. Um, but he confronts her, and then when we were watching this, I don't know about you three, but I thought that John was being so stupid to still try to convince Mary, you love me, we love each other, let's go be together. It's over for Mary. She's a witch. Like, she's gone over to the dark side, and she can't come back, John. But I don't think he knows that. I don't think he knows all the rules of being a witch. I feel like he knows how serious an actual witch would be that he, especially him, as skeptical as he is, dude, you gotta run far and fast. I know you feel for her, but you gotta run far and fast. But he loves mm -hmm. her. You're people really do, saying... Yes, because like we've always said before, people do stupid stuff when they're in love. <laughs> but, that stu is true. but stupid stuff is like, I don't know, go like <laughs> overnight driving well, somewhere. This is a witch, he's, man. He's just not thinking. I mean, think, I mean, think, I know you've never been in this situation before, <laughs> but <laughs> similar situations, you know, like you're not thinking. You're just like, okay, let's just run away. That'll solve everything. But what about this? What about he's just been in jail and is facing death like he should have been hanged in a matter of hours he's freed and he's just gonna like hang out and wait like no bro <laughs> run get out of there wait yeah that was foolish it was only until the night time though yeah but again <laughs> i mean we talked about it last week that we felt like john alden was at the at that point in his life he's like well yeah hang me for all my wrongdoing so at that point i felt like as a person he already gave up so now that this is happening you know you know he has another reason to live and maybe have the love of his life come go with him and he could be thinking hey this babe's got powers and I could use this. <laughs> oh, Lord, I hope he's not thinking that. <laughs> but right now, he's not really caring about himself. He's caring more for Mary. True well, though. I mean, is he caring for Mary, though? Because wouldn't the best thing for Mary to kind of keep her in her situation? Because if she leaves as a witch and he leaves this grand right? He was concerned for Mary. We'll yeah. Definitely say that. Oh, for sure. And I know he feels for her, but just it's, a, it's really selfish of him and dumb for me because if he takes Mary out of this situation, I know he doesn't know the rules of being a witch, but he's got to know there's going to be consequences. It's like... And not to make a weird comparison, but it's almost like being in a gang. You can't just walk away one day. Like, they don't let you do that. Mm -hmm. So he's got to know that Mary can't just walk away, and the other witches are going to be like, oh, it's cool, man. <laughs> nice nice to work with you. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, but they almost did. I don't want to jump too far ahead, but they almost did that. No, the, but I. But they weren't going to let that happen. There was no way they were going to let that happen. She walked away from them, the old witches and the, the old yeah. woman in the woods. There was no way that they had to do something, and then they blackmailed her with her child. Because they knew that was going to keep her around. But mm -hmm. since you brought up the child, how does she even know it's her child? Well, that's she a good question. It. 
But do you know just off the smell of the hair? She has witchy werewolf scent. <laughs> it she, might have been like maternal she instincts. She never even met her baby. Like, she never saw it. So how does she know what it smells like? I mean, maybe they're lying to maternal her. Maternal instincts. Maybe they just brought out right? a kid. They're like, here's Lucifer. <laughs> well, <laughs> but here's the, here's the thing then. She effectively chose the child over John because she didn't come back when the moon was up. She didn't come back and get John. Well, we know this. They cannot keep a vow to each other. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. I just don't know why she didn't transform, go to John, be, be like, I'll be right back. I have to just perform this. I'll meet you here. <laughs> right. Like, it could have all been done. It could have been. Poor acting on her part. But she's a good mother. <laughs> she's a good mother because she chose the child over John. Yeah, she is. I what is a greatest mother of the year because she abandoned her child for seven she did years. Abort him. She did abort yes, him. Yes, but she abandoned she her child worse. for seven years for I'm, something else. I was pretty sad that the child was not Stephen. I do like Stephen. I, th I think we were expecting Stephen. Yeah. But no. Stephen would have been the dark horse because he already would have bonded with John. And then Stephen and Mary. Stephen, of course, was a child who didn't talk, the de the mute child in the orphanage. He and uh, John and Mary could have run away together and had a little family. He's coming oh. back. Season two will be a sitcom with the three of them, and they open up some <laughs> kind of store, you know, in Chicago or something. Um, some store. <laughs> no, I, I, here's the other thing about Mary in this scene. And you say, Jesse, why didn't she just kind of teleport back and complete her mission or whatever? I, I, that's a good question because Mercy then starts throwing limbs at Mary, like hands and arms and stuff like that. It's talking about sacrifice right there in the woods and really throws Mary off her game. And Mary, we've talked how Mary has dwindled in influence and power and stuff for weeks now, but Mary's terrified of Mercy and Mercy's way over the top crazy and Mercy says it. She's got nothing left to live for because all her girls died except for Dolly. All the other girls died. So what does Mercy care? She's going to take out anybody she needs to take out and that's a dangerous person. Yeah, Mercy's maniacal, and at this point, now, I love how, from the beginning of the season, we think all the good people are bad, and now, like, it's complete character swaps for everybody and the whole power struggle, which I find fascinating, and now that Mary's the good person that we're rooting for, and Mercy's the bad one that we have to look out for, and, uh, I don't know, like, her maniacal ways, it's just, it's scary to think what she's capable of for next season. And I said from, from episode one that Mercy was going to be a great adversary for Mary, Boom. Here she is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you guys see that uh, fly, fly ball Mercy's face? And mm -hmm. it just sat there for a second, and then she just kept going. I'm like, girl, that itches me. <laughs> like, ugh. Yeah. Can't even do it. Mercy, do Mercy yeah. doesn't care. That's the least important thing in Mercy's life right now is that fly. She doesn't care. You got to itch a tickle. <laughs> <laughs> Jesseisms right here on the Salem After Show on AfterBuzz TV. Uh, all right, so back to Mary with the grand right. Um, I don't want to talk too much about a lot of the scenes she's in with Increase because I want to get to kind of these untimely deaths later in the show. So forgive us for jumping a little bit ahead with that sort of stuff. But let's talk about Mary and Isaac a little bit. Mm -hmm. Isaac is calls himself an idiot in this show, so it's okay. I'm going to call him an idiot. A fool. fool. A fool. Calls himself a fool in this show, so I'm going to call him a fool. But... He is very, very close with Mary in like a brother sister type of way, a friend, obviously a platonic, not very romantic close type friend. of way, but very, very, very close. And she's, I don't even want to say a mentor to him. She treats him as an equal in a way, even though he's not necessarily an equal to her, but she's nice enough to do that. And he's sort of like the real odd man out, and I can't help it, but I know you guys must all feel sorry for him. He's in a bad situation. Oh, I feel really yeah. sorry for him now, especially since, you know, he made like a life decision at the end. He's. He's a goner. Just too curious for his own good, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. And the thing is, it's like we can see Mary be actually empathetic and sympathetic towards um, Isaac throughout the, all these episodes, but you feel like it's actually genuine because she knows what, like, in the certain ways that she makes Isaac do her, her doings and, like, go through the, her actions for her self-gain. And I think she that also comes from that self-guilt. So, but I mean, if it does seem genuine, but she knows that she's really using Isaac for her, like as a pawn. But in the end, she did do like a good thing. She gave him all that money, expecting him to continue on into mm -hmm. somewhere well, else. Right, and she did that. She did that with Isaac. She did that with Cotton. So people that she actually somewhat cared about, she was like, "Get out of town." You go start a new life for yourself. And people who are obviously mortal, who have no ties to the witches, and who she who she doesn't care about forever, like a John-type person, she gives them financial resources, like Isaac, and kind of says, 
you're going to live a mortal life, just go live a superficial, not necessarily superficial, but go live a material mortal life with a lot of money. That doesn't matter to me, but I know this will make your life better for all the bad stuff you had to go through. And I think that's her way of, in a weird way, kind of showing love because there's not much else she could do to make amends for it right now in her situation. Mm -hmm. What else could she have done for Isaac? You know, take him out of town personally. I mean, what could she have done? Yeah, it was a parting gift. She could have healed that F on his forehead. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Healed his flesh right up. Well, she's got a little bit more to heal now. <laughs> With what if happened to him later. If she finds him, which could be cool. What if Isaac becomes one of the witches in the woods? What if Mercy finds him? Mercy would be yeah. the more likely person to find him. You do, you think Mercy, do you think Mercy would save him? <laughs> Why not? No. She needs to build an army. Why not? He's he's amongst the poor and the weak and the the children. He's very childlike. But I don't think Isaac's loyalty lies towards Mercy. It lies towards... Um, Mary. But she Even did. though, like, all this shit, sorry, all this stuff went <laughs> down with Mary and stuff, I still feel like his friendship is so strong between Mary that he would still be loyal to her. I still think that Mercy could see him as a swing vote. I want mm. to, I can't wait to talk about this with Mercy because I have a lot to say and I kind of disagree with you, but before we do it, let's take a real quick break. We've got an announcement for you guys about a new show on USA. Let's run that. We'll be right back. This Thursday on USA Network. I love my wife. Is love enough to keep a relationship going? What does love really mean? Can I have sex with one person for the rest of my life? This summer's most provocative new series. What if having it all isn't enough? I just want to feel alive again. I want to feel appreciated. I want to experience more. What else is out there? Why can't I tell him what is I want? Is there something more? What does love really mean? Am I the mean? only one who feels like this? Am I satisfied? Satisfaction, a postmodern love story, premieres this Thursday at 10, 9 central on USA Network. <laughs> satisfaction, huh? That sounds kind of fun. I think we were all jamming out to the music and stuff, so maybe that's something we'll check out on Thursdays. It can't compare to Salem, though, am I right? We'll you see. can't get no it's satisfaction. Awesome, <laughs> USA. I have a feeling Jesse's going to like that show. Characters welcome, including you, Jesse. Um, all right, let's get back now to Mercy, Anna, what you brought up, because this is a great second topic with her. I feel like on a season finale, you kind of almost want to do predictions all show because, you know, this is what the season was about and what's coming forward. So let's just yeah. talk Mercy, where she is, where she's come from, which we've talked about a lot, and where she's going. She has that army of children that she's rounded up. And we know that she's manipulative, and I don't necessarily mean that in a totally bad way, with the other teenage girls, with Emily and all those girls before. So I can only imagine when she has an army of children and people under her, what she's going to be able to accomplish and how much manipulation she's going to be able to do. But... How does Mercy fill in with this grand right that's going down right now? And then we haven't really seen everything even get started yet. I wonder if she even knows it's even going on. Because she didn't seem like she was... Uh, she never mentioned it. She was just talking about becoming the queen, basically the leader. And did anybody else notice the crown of thorns mm -hmm. on her head? It was like she was portraying Jesus. I thought yeah. that was kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, well, I... I don't think we've seen everything yet because the way that they ended this episode is so open-ended for anything to come for the next season. But I I think she's building an army to be, uh, of course, be the leader, but we still don't know what's going to happen. So, Anna, you say, does Isaac join Mercy's army? I say, I'm not saying that he does, but what I'm saying is it's likely for Mercy to find him first and try to, to flip him. And I think that Mercy... Okay, here's prediction that Mercy will <laughs> find him and try to like illuminate his mind to everything that's going on. You know, Mary's really a witch. Don't you see she's done this, this, and this to you? She's manipulated you in all these ways. She's really taking advantage of you. Of course, he's gonna like say like no, like she's been my friend. She's been the only one. Just like just the way like Increase tried to to flip him to his side. Um, he won't be flipped. Mostly, I think, out of loyalty to John um, and no to Mary too. He has that relationship with Mary, but. Uh, but but I think Mercy will be the first to find him. And I think if anybody is manipulative in this show, it's Mercy. Especially now that Increase is dead. So long, Increase. Spoiler alert. Mm -hmm. And and if anybody is able to be manipulated, it's Isaac. Because Isaac's been manipulated one way or another by almost everybody, it seems like. By George Sibley, by gullible. Increase, by Mary, a little bit by John and Cotton and having him do some of their work for him. Not on the scope of the other three, but he's kind of manipulated by everybody. So I think it's a... And I agree with you, in terms of loyalty, as manipulative... As manipulatable, which is not a word, as uh, Isaac is, he's still very, very loyal. And as long as Mary is around in some fashion, and as long as John hasn't died, which we're going to talk about in a second, um, Isaac probably won't end up being manipulated. But who knows? Because Mercy's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's my main takeaway from season one. Mercy be cray. <laughs> Hashtag Mercy's cray. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I, again, I say I think Isaac is too loyal to Mary. 
no matter what went down. I mean, you have to think, everything he's ever had has kind of been taken away from him, and Mary's all he has, other than his horse, and his horse just died. Yeah. <laughs> For reals. Yeah. That's a good that's point. True. So he really has nothing. Wasn't that the saddest? That was like the saddest thing I ever heard. Even my best friends, except for that horse, oh, no. yeah. Yeah. Like, oh. and he died. It's like, oh, your life. I wonder if his horse died when it fell, you know, with Sibley in the back and everything. Was that his horse? Because that's been a long time of walking. But it just shows he, he is <laughs> such a sad character. Yeah. Sad things and in his life. And then to see him suffer like that at the end, I'm just like. I, I, the other thing that made me sad is when he took the note to Cotton, and he gave the note to Cotton. Cotton's like, what's this? And Isaac kind of gives him the note and says, all right, well, the... Night is long and my legs are not. And Cotton kind of ignores him and is reading the letter and I just sort of lets himself out. <laughs> I know. I wonder what the note said. Obviously something like, I'm, I was guessing it was like, uh, your father has Mary Sibley, whatever. Yeah, Mary was making a frame job on increase. It was something like that because Cotton obviously came running right in. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, poor Isaac. I guess we'll, uh, who knows what we're going to see with Isaac next season, I assume. But he's not dead yet. I didn't get the impression, uh, he's still alive, obviously. Yeah, but he's not in the best shape. No. We'll definitely say that. You can't see, for sure. Unless Mary does, like, a spell on him. Who knows? Yes, unless Mary <laughs> interferes and, like, tries to Remember, reverse all the actions. They don't need another innocent to die. They've already got their 13. So, it... it I don't know the rules of the Malum when it's opened up by an innocent and what happens, or if it's too powerful and he dies anyways or whatever, but they don't need another, so maybe Isaac will end up. But it's death on Earth. It's, yeah. it's everybody dies, unless you're a witch. So but here's my question. Or if, if, it's, if it's death on Earth, why send Isaac to Virginia? Why send Cotton to Boston? Is it a regional area of death to start? Yeah, I thought it was just Salem. I thought it was just Salem. Because why would she tell him to go to Boston and Virginia? Yeah. Or? Yeah. Well, but that's I guess I guess I was getting that from increase. I guess I was getting the increase. <laughs> I, I thought it was like it was a regional kind of thing because the last time that they mentioned the last time it happened that so many people were affected, but not everybody. That because the, there were people who still survived. The, the, all the scarred witches in the the forest. So maybe it's just people in the imminent area. The if you were in if you were in the following zip codes, you must <laughs> evacuate immediately. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. no, but I, but Anna, I know what you're saying. I think it is a regional thing too. Or, or I don't know if regional is the right word, but I know what you're saying because everybody talks about the grand right and they're like, oh, you know, hell will rain down upon earth and this and that. It makes it sound horrible. And you're like, well, earth or just Salem? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we could lose this place. Yeah. yeah. Can I just like go for a long weekend somewhere <laughs> and then like it's fine? What I happens just... in Salem is going to stay in Salem after this grand right. The perfect plan would have been to just get John and everybody she cared about down in like a little place like Hale had. That would have just been the perfect thing. That's too, that's too simple, though, because Hale's place worked out. It's supposed to be simple, and it didn't work out that way. Okay. That's because he had an inexperienced witch on his hands. Well, mm. well first of all, what, what's up with Hale bitching out and hiding? What, can we start with that? I, you know, I, don't, I didn't mind this as much because of his past and what they told about all the stuff he's seeing with his parents and stuff like that. And he even alludes to it. He's like, if you've been through as much as I've been through, you learn how to height or whatever. So I understand that and I think he probably did it to protect his wife and his daughter more even than to protect himself because he's at the point as a witch A, he knows what's up, B, he can take care of himself and C, if it were just him alone, I don't know that he'd care that much anymore if he lived or died or did whatever because he's more old school and he's been doing this forever and, and I don't know his motives are as, as uh, stringent as Mary's or Mercy's but I think the fact that he had his daughter specifically and she was so innocent and new and maybe it has to deal with the fact that he already kind of sold her soul and sent her into witchcraft. And he feels so guilty about doing stuff like that and wants to bring her in properly that he can't bear to have her suffer in any way should something happen. So that's why they hide, I would guess. All right. Fair enough. I just, there was like this whole power struggle between him and Mary the whole season. And for the last minute at the Grand Right, they're like, just kidding, we're going to hide in the attic. Like, <laughs> just seemed strange. Yeah. Well, well I, th I think Mary had control over the whole Grand Right. Correct? Like, well, yeah. No, but, but I mean, Hale was always involved with that stuff intimately, and he was talking to the old witches in the woods, and he was doing all kinds of things, and he's really backed off and disappeared in the last couple episodes, and maybe it's directly correlated to Anne and what Anne's learning and what Anne has learned about him and the powers that Anne has. We saw what happened to her eyes and stuff with Cotton, and then we obviously saw what happened to Hale. Hey, see you later, buddy. You're no longer going to be around. Um, to Hale in this episode, so maybe Anne has such ridiculously strong 
powers or something, that had to affect Hale and what he did. I think that was it, because also, now that the secret's out, that she knows about herself, that being a witch or whatever, that even as a kid, because he was trying to teach her again, like, no, you really are powerful. You can, it, you know, your powers are pretty much dormant, but you can make them active again, and, like, kind of teaching her and conditioning her again. So I think... It was to hide themselves for the future in case, like, we really needed Anne for something else. There might be another curse going down that Anne might have to help stop or something. Well, Hale's a good start because Hale, we can kind of go through a list of, uh, we call it in memoriam here on Salem, untimely deaths. On, uh, mm -hmm. on uh, how about disappointing, you know, departures from the show? Gloriana didn't die, but she did depart, and that's still the most disappointing one for me. We, of course, have those 14 girls last week, and then a lot of people died today, the first of which is Hale's wife and Magistrate Hale. Uh, didn't see that one coming. I was no. shocked, and I'm hoping that he comes back by some sort of witch powers, but uh, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't look good for him at all. At first yeah. I was like really in shock, like especially when she got skinned on the top of her yeah. head. I was like, wait, she's still gonna make it. She's just bobbling <laughs> for a second. <laughs> but nope, she was gone. So did Anne know what she was doing, or did she black out, kind of like she did with Cotton when I he was a I think she blacked out. out. Yeah. It, that was another situation where she didn't realize the, how much, how strong she is and how powerful that she, she went crazy. And then you even saw at the end of that, when they were both dead, she didn't feel any emotions. Like, she was gone. It was a completely different person that took over. So, and also, we did see that little moment right before, you know, the mother died that, or I think it was Hale saying that what we are, so it shows that the, or I think the mother actually said that, so, like, the mother was admitting that she is also a witch. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, we've been speculating that she knows things, but is she a witch herself, but then she confirmed it, pretty much. Well, was she because he was saying either those of us who are or are touched by witchcraft, so maybe she was just touched by Touched Either by way, meaning. she died. <laughs> yeah, she's dead. It doesn't she's matter. Gone. It really doesn't matter. So, I, I don't know. I, I guess we never really learn a whole lot about Hale's wife, and it makes me think because we never learned a whole lot, and she never became significant, and and we don't even remember her actual name. If it was ever given to us, I'm not sure it was. Think it was. Um, maybe she was just an innocent, and she wasn't a witch, and she just had a kid with a witch. If you can do that, and hey, if you can do that. Maybe there's hope for John and Mary. Maybe that's the greatest argument for John and Mary. If Hale can have a wife and live and do whatever, maybe John and Mary can make it because Hale's made it as a witch with a you maybe know mortal the, spouse. Maybe their son is a witch. That's what I was just about to say. Oh, he, they're the next Hale. There's no there's no, <laughs> the next generation. There's no doubt the kid's a witch. Yeah, He's definitely a no, witch. Yeah. Next generation. Something Bobby said while we were watching it whenever um I don't want to give it away. Whenever John was surrounded, he was like, what if John says, uh, like, disappears like he's a witch? What if John really is a witch and then gets, like, powers and then they do spells together? Like, he's, his powers are dormant, too? Yeah. Maybe. Like, he doesn't know that he's a witch? Mm -hmm. He's from a different coven or something like that? I don't know if that can happen. A different coven? <laughs> yeah, you know, like a different group of witches. Yeah. American Horror Story crossover. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, mm. American Horror Story didn't coin coven. Yeah, coven's yeah. a witch word. Yeah, no, I know. It's a witch word. Come on, yeah. guys. <laughs> No, you're witches. Yeah. Anyways, um, okay, well, let's talk about John a little bit now, because this may or may not be an untimely death, so I'll just open it up. Does he die? No, of course not. Yeah, really? I don't think the so. Indians are going to save him. He Again. Was, yeah. Again. <laughs> Again. They're going to get sick of this. He's such an integral character of the show now. And it's too early in the show to kill off a huge main character, so I don't think he's dead. No, he was a driving force for Mary, and she's another big character. It's like, if you kill Mary, then you don't have a show, really. And so I, I think he's too big of a character to kill off this soon. Where are... Okay, they're in the woods, but if the Graham Wright's going on, won't the plague affect him and the Indians, too? Or are they on, like... Over the border. You know what's interesting <laughs> yeah. about this, and, and I'm just completely speculating, obviously, <laughs> like we usually speculate, but because the Indians are technically, from a Christian perspective, quote-unquote heathens, because they are not Puritans and they are not Christian, maybe the Grand Rite, as much as they've talked about Puritanism and Puritanical stuff on this show, maybe the Grand Rite only affects innocents who are Puritans or who are Christian, because those are coming after the witches, and the Indians are sort of outside of it, even if they're in the region. Even if they're in the zip code. <laughs> even if they're in the zip code. 
<laughs> I don't know. That's just speculation. Uh, no, I like what, what you're saying because uh, there was that whole conversation between Mary and Increase about, uh, you know, as much as you say that we're, you know, evil or whatever it is, we're, we're like wolves. We just attack our prey. We don't torture. Um, so they've really had, they have now have this sort of, um, this intense relationship with the Puritans where um, they're like true enemies, where they feel very much under attack from them. Um, so so maybe that you now there's just this hatred between them. How about this for a season two prediction? I'm kind of not serious about it, but I'll go with it anyways. The Indians get sick of all this mumbo jumbo and everything that's going on, and they kill the witches and everybody else in Salem and say, we're going to take this land back. See you later, guys. <laughs> <laughs> there's a third battle here, and the Indians right. are going to win. <laughs> It's going to be a completely different show in season That'd two. That'd be interesting to see. I mean, I'd like to see the Indians play a bigger part and bigger role in the show because we see them only with really John, but, in, you know, how they affect everybody else in the town. In the history, in real history in this time, in American, you know, in New England and stuff, there were constant wars and skirmishes between Indians and settlers and stuff like that. There were major wars going on at the time, and the French mm -hmm. and the British would back different groups of Indians against each other and play them off the colonists and blah, blah, blah. So... I think it would make historical sense to involve them a little bit, and knowing what Salem does with history is sort of skim off the top and take the event and then change it. You can involve the Indians in some way, take the event, and then totally change it to your own thing, and I think it could be fascinating. Well, you know, okay. Indians, like, um, I don't know a ton about the history, but, you know, they believe in, like, certain magical things happening, and they do a lot of, I wouldn't say it's spells, but chanting and that kind of stuff. Um, maybe that kind of relates to the witches, and maybe they could, like, team up. Prediction. That the natives and the witches would team up? Yeah, like, you know, like the just live in a community together. You know, like, the witches can be themselves, and then the Indians can live on free land. I'm just being hopeful. <laughs> so, but we can all agree that John is not dead. He will not die. He will get saved, whether it's by the Indians or somebody else. He's already been saved by the Indians. But I mean, he's gonna like well, recover. Someone's gonna help him. He's heal. gonna recover. Yeah. He was shot in like the clavicle almost. They're, like they're gonna do another. They're gonna put that stuff on him. Oh again. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Close enough. We've done this before. We have been here before. <laughs> okay. Now, what about another untimely death we gotta talk about tonight? Sorry, Increase Mather. Good night. About time. See I you later. See it's He's going to do Av Avatar. <laughs> it's a long time coming. No. A long time okay. coming. About time. You okay. can't do Avatar and Salem at the same time. Come on. <laughs> it's an exhausting true. work schedule. <laughs> uh, you wonder, you know, Marissa, you said you can't kill off Mary because she's integral to the show. You probably can't kill off John because he is. To me, this show, I like this show from the beginning. It got significantly better when Increase came on board. So I'm actually sad that he's dying and theoretically won't be around anymore because he brought some crazy energy to this show. He did, and I loved him. He's a brilliant actor. He's amazing. Uh, but how much increase, really? I mean, it's the same. I want just the increase hour. I want increase to do a talk show in Salem, and I would just listen to him speak for a few hours. Okay. Something Ooh. good for you I just thought about. Oh, what if, now that Increase is gone, word gets back to Gloriana and she comes back looking for cotton? I like this better. Uh -oh. Okay, Increase, I'm glad he's dead. Bring back Gloriana. I like this a lot better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What if Cotton goes to find Gloriana right now? He's already on the road. <laughs> this is great. Let's just follow them. But what if she's, she's coming back? Horn it up in Boston. Uh. <laughs> but that'd be fine. She doesn't know I mean, another train. I just want to see her again. I just want to see her again. <laughs> yeah. That's all. Bobby's in love. I am in love. I know. But, okay, going back to, <laughs> sorry, Real Increase's things. death. Now, I mean, I like how they built him up. He's the bad guy. We all know that. Every show has their bad guy for the season or, like, half the season, which in this case it was half the season. So, you know, the more they build up someone to be the bad person, the more satisfactory their death is. So I, I believe it was very satisfactory tonight's episode. I It was coming. I did and I didn't. I did because it was satisfactory in the sense that Cotton – literally stood up to dad because dad called him you're a failure you're all this terrible stuff whatever so I, so I see it and I'm like hey Cotton you probably did the right thing even though Mary's actually a witch and you don't know that you did the right thing because Increase is insane and he had to go however don't forget how Cotton killed Increase he stabbed him in the back mm -hmm. you know I hope the metaphor is not lost on y'all he no, did not no. he did not go face to face with this guy man to man he stabbed him in the back when he wasn't looking so even though we can say cotton stood up and cotton defended mary not knowing she was a witch and blah 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 and increase had it coming 
yeah, that, all that's true, but Cotton still was a little lacking in honor in how he did it because he stabbed somebody in the back who wasn't expecting it. Yeah, because yeah. that shows cowardice, actually, yeah. the, the symbolism of not facing your enemy. But in his defense, he was about to attack Mary, so he had to go through the back. I, I get it, but that's the point. That's why you do it, so that Cotton is sympathetic enough in this thing so you don't think he's a cold-blooded murderer or a psycho, but it still can't be lost that he stabbed him in the back. Okay, and that's fair, but can we also agree that, like, you know, caught in a couple of episodes ago, would not have killed him at all. Absolutely. And I think he's also sympathetic because he not only, he killed him, but he also held him in his arms as he died. You know, the, it was a powerful moment, I thought. And and also, I mean, we got even minutes before his untimely death that pretty much told the audience he's his point of being there is like he really doesn't have a point anymore because Mary's like I used you to create all the the hype in Salem and you killed all these people for me instead of myself like everyone killed themselves and they did the work and it was pretty much like you're there's no reason for you anymore so it really does make sense they told the audience hey everything's done now you're the last piece of the puzzle kill him. Well, Mary literally said, it will end here in this room right now. And then I think they went to break and then came back. So yeah, yeah we I knew mean, somebody was going to die, and we had a feeling because of her powers it wasn't going to be Mary. Right. We knew it was Sorry, coming. Increase. <laughs> yeah. I think it was time. I think, like you said, you can't prolong it. Like, there's only so much he can do before, like, the whole town's like, you know what, we don't have to take this. And then they all kill him. Like, I don't know, I just, yes, you know. No, but it was like his purpose, he didn't have a purpose anymore. Remember, though, a couple episodes ago, six episodes ago, a while back, Mary did say something to somebody, and I can't remember what the situation was, but she said to Mercy, perhaps, we can't kill Increase because he's so well-known throughout the country and around the world. And so I wonder, now that you have killed Increase, who's going to start looking? Who's going to start coming, and who's going to put the focal point on this town? But the plague's coming, so that could kind of be an excuse, too. Like, a lot of people are about to die. Sure, no, I, I, I agree with you, but it depends how long that's going to take, and it just depends how soon and how word gets back, because the way we left it right now, Cotton was supposed to leave town. Mary was supposed to say, you know, oh, it was the witches, or it was John Alden who, you know, John Alden's supporters who killed them. Well, what if nobody buys that story and thinks it's something else? Who knows how word gets out, and who knows who comes looking for increase? Well, I think that that's a completely I mean, they they know that he's been torturing people. I mean, he like proudly hung up a sign like "House of Pain," you know, "House yeah. of Pain" here by Increase Mather. Like he's totally <laughs> proud of it. So I think they'll buy that. You know, Cotton when he saw that like Mary Sibley, you know, most powerful woman in Salem, was being tortured. Like he'll he'll back up that story. And if it comes down to like, yeah, I was being tortured, and Cotton came in and saved me, and people go, oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and by the way, we had questioned whether or not, you know, Increase is right or wrong about who he's after. So he did know this whole time that it was Mary and was just using John. So that's, I guess, reassuring I don't know, now that he's dead. Now that he's dead, Died he's still... Honest and right. He did die honest and right. He let go people who clearly weren't witches, like Gloriana and like some other people. And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. So Increase actually was right. It turns out every time, because he knew about John, and then in the scene today, when John is out of the prison, Increase says, why would I hang a free man? So you understood that Increase knew then about John, too. But if John would have still been there, do you think he really would have not hung him? John would have never still been there, because Mary would have had to have done that. I know, but if, if he was there, if she brought him back and they had some kind of plan, like I think he still would have gone through with it. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Well, he did say that he deserved to hang for all of his other acts of yeah. treason. and. But he's not a witch. But he's not a witch. But it is okay that he strangled that little girl to death. Increase. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah, Increase was a... I don't know if we'll remember you fondly, Increase, but you sure brought something to the show. Yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. Is that it for deaths this week? I feel like there were so many deaths. I'm trying to look through my notes and be like, who else died? But we've got Anne's parents. We've got Increase. We've got John, who may or may not be dead. We've got Isaac, Isaac who may or may not be dead. Um, I think that's about it. One more person to talk about on this show before we go to predictions and season two stuff and all that good stuff is Titaba. Um, Titaba, we see really at Mary's throat. Literally, the two of them were at each other's throat, calling each other traitors, saying, you betrayed me, I betrayed you, whatever. And... One thing that I'm reminded of with Titaba, and we never see it a ton in this season so far, but one thing I'm reminded of is 
I believe it was uh, Janet Montgomery who did an interview with somebody that we had on News and Gossip a month ago, and she said the relationship between Tituba and Mary is one of almost like sisters, but also almost like lovers. And so if you're going to be almost like lovers and then start talking about betrayal, all these emotions get heightened to another level. It's not just two friends not seeing eye to eye or whatever. This is a really, really deep connection that's now totally ruined. And Mary, who already has an enemy in Mercy, who had an enemy in Increase, who had kind of an adversary in Hale, now has another big time enemy in Titaba. Well, they are lovers. They have seduced men together, at least one man. Yeah. So that changes things. Sex changes a relationship. Whether or not you throw romance in there or not, I mean, it definitely changes the dynamic of a relationship. So, so the question is, now that Tituba has faced Mary, is Tituba going to be the next big witch to look out for? I think it's Mercy. I think okay. it's always well, Mercy. they go head to head. What if Tituba sides up with Mercy go and they again. go against Mary? I think Mercy's too crazy and doesn't want to trust anybody. True. And, and let's be clear about this. Mercy's too young and too kind of off the cuff, flying rogue. Mercy's not smart enough to side with anybody. I think she's too cocky and she can do it. I have my minions. I've got my army of children. I am the queen of the night. Why would the queen of the night side with anybody? But she is very powerful because really nobody yeah. has taught her most of what she knows. She's figured it out on her own. So she maybe can be the queen of the night. Well, the wild card now is Anne. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anne's talk about powerful. Rule the world, I'm not even know Anne. she's doing it. That's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Anne, talk about powerful and not even knowing it. There's Mercy's power where she kind of revels in it, and there's Anne's power which she like is blacking out in it. We don't know what's going on. So I'm just saying, watch out for Anne. You might have like a four pronged witch attack here with Mary and Mercy and Tituba and Anne, and maybe they don't ally with each other at all for a while because they're all going against each other. Yeah, that's my prediction last week that I'll stick with. <laughs> I have a prediction. <laughs> Before we do that, let's go to uh, news and gossip first. After Buzz TV News. I'm glad we're wrapping this a little bit early because we're going to do a lot with predictions since it was such a big season. we got a lot to talk about next year. But real quick on news, first off, guys, nothing too crazy about Salem. A little bit more about WGN America, though, which, of course, carried Salem. Good news on WGN. The New York Times this week had a very good syndicated story in an interview with executives at WGN about where the cable channel is going, what they're doing, and stuff like that. Salem is, of course, the first scripted series on WGN. Uh, cough, cough, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. On July 27th, WGN will debut Man. Manhattan. That is about the Manhattan Project, World yep. War II, the atomic bomb. On Monday, July 28th at 5 p.m. Pacific time, Marissa Serafini and I will be hosting the after show. So yes, we will. A little humble brag. I mentioned that, though, because WGN was talking about expanding scripted series. Uh, the president of WGN said, quote, Salem represents stage one of our transformation to becoming a cable network. And the Tribune Company president, which owns WGN, said that it was a channel with 70 million to 80 million homes in America. We had no original program it was fraught with opportunity and that we are going to deliberately move forward in the next 18 months or so with more original programming. So maybe they talked a lot about AMC, USA, other cable channels, TBS, which went from kind of a superstation showing sitcoms and baseball to showing original stuff. And they said WGN is the same way. And there's no reason they shouldn't do the same thing and expect to see a lot more of these, you know, original, original scripted shows. series. So. Cool. In if the next 18 months, they can get a lot of shows. That They can probably shoot three shows in that amount of time. And they've got a lot of hours to do it. I mean, they yeah. literally show, if you watch WGN, they literally show Chicago News, and then everything else is sitcoms and syndicated programming and whatever, so they've got a lot of hours in the day to fill with shows. So we'll see what happens. Is, do you know if WGN is going to put Salem on Netflix? I did not read that yet. I assume it's got to be, ho I hope it's coming on something like that. I think they definitely should because not everybody has seen it. That was one yeah. shortcoming they had with that was not but only. It is on Hulu Plus. They're only in like 80 million homes because it doesn't go to everybody, obviously, like another major cable station would. The other thing is, and this is my one criticism of WGN, the Salem website, really lacking. I don't know if, how many times y'all checked it out. Pictures and stuff, not many clips of episodes, not a ton of like, I mean, they had previews and stuff, but a lot of these websites now will make available the show for a couple days after it airs or whatever, mm -hmm. and I would love to see this thing twice, and it's nowhere online. So I hope, I don't know what the reason was legally for not doing that, but I hope down the road they go a little more heavy on kind of their post-programming on the internet. 
So. Uh, well, and um, Salem is currently on Hulu Plus too. So even if you don't have WGN, but you are a subscriber to that, you can you're still available to it. So it is still out there for other people to you know get a hold of. Well, there you go. And like I said, hey, speaking of WGN, Marissa and I will do Manhattan. That will begin Monday, July 28th. So if you're a World War II buff, join us because it is going to get nerdy. Oh, so nerdy. I love World War II. <laughs> and our last piece of news isn't really news because it's going to take us into predictions. But when we do predictions here in a second, we want to hear from you guys at home what your Season 2 predictions are. We'll remind you at the end of the show, but if you're watching on YouTube right now, comment below. We want to hear every single one of your Season 2 predictions and get you guys involved. So without further ado, let's go to it. Prediction time. And now, your After Buzz TV predictions. All right, who's thinking particularly intelligently? Who would like to go first? Marissa has one. She's like, I can. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I do have one. She's got like six. About <laughs> Anne, really, really more so about Anne, because when we see all the other witches when they go like crazy balls to the wall, crazy with their witchcraft, I don't think their eyes really like get affected. They're they're still kind of normal somewhat, but when Anne uses her power and she goes over the top. Her eyes change, so it makes me. Th and they're very red and demon-like. So I'm kind of thinking maybe she's not just a witch. Maybe she's some kind of demon being that would have powers to hmm. do something. Like they, it still has the ability, but from the outside, it would look like she's a witch because the you know Salem, it's witches. But what if she's actually a different type of supernatural being she's that awesome. allows her to do these, um, have her abilities. She has that serpent tongue, too. Yes, serpent tongue. So in some type of demonic creature. Yeah, yeah. I like that. <laughs> well, I like your reaction. I don't think <laughs> yeah. So I'm saying I don't think she's a witch. I think she's some type of demonic creature. I'll make a prediction. I think the John Mary love story is done. Because if there is one thing John cannot stand, it is innocent people dying. And now that Mary has initiated this grand rite with what happened with Increase and all that sort of stuff, innocent people are supposedly going to be dying in the zip code around Salem. And I think John, as much as he loves Mary, when he recovers with the Indians, he will see what's going on or be told what's going on or whatever and say, you're dead to me, Mary, you know, no pun intended. I loved you. you, I gave you a chance, we could have gone away together. Now that this is initiated and innocent people who don't deserve to die are dying, you are not my, you know, wannabe girlfriend anymore, you are my sworn enemy and I must end this at all costs. And I think in season two, John's mission with the Indians on his side becomes Kill Mary. All right. I kind of agree with that, but I'm going to add on a little bit. Go for I it. I think there's going to be a big rival between Mary and Tichuba. Tichuba. I, somebody said we weren't saying her name right. Tituba. Tituba. No, Tituba. Tituba. Tituba or Tituba. No, you got Tituba. Tituba. Whatever. Mm -hmm. Thirteen episodes. You think we'd get it? Yeah. So she's gonna she's gonna rival Mary. Yeah, I think there's gonna be a big fight, and then in the end, it's gonna like you know in in movies like how there's always gonna be that one person to pick which one they want to save kind of deal. Yeah, I think it's going to kind of end like that. I'm thinking of the movie The Good Son. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. It's oh, yes. amazing. Yes. With Macaulay yes. Culkin and Elijah Macaulay. Wood. I'm not going to give away the end of that movie, but if you haven't yet watched The Good Son, you're welcome. Yes. So it'll be something like that, exactly. huh? Exactly. Actually, own that movie. Watch it tonight. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm going to go look this up. i got to take a plane ride tomorrow. I'm going to watch this on the plane right now. Woo! <laughs> Uh, well, I'm, I'm just going to stick with predictions that I've made all season that I just think that are going to... I still think there's going to be a battle royale of witches they, because there are just, like, strong witches that are not seeming to have a side with anybody. Um, and I think we're going to see a return of Gloriana. Um, yes! Seth Gable kind of gave a hand. They did, like, a Q&A with, um, with the cast members on Twitter, and Seth Gable kind of, like, didn't say it was happening, didn't say it wasn't, and then Azura Parsons kind of, like, gave a little winky back, like, you're the best. Did, um, she, did she do the, the semicolon in the parentheses, or did she do an emoji? Semicolon parentheses, like an adult. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm just, cu we know Shane West likes emojis. <laughs> yeah, maybe she had a twitch. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay. uh, but yeah, I think we're seeing a return there. Um, what else? Yeah, I think there's going to be. I guess a divide between Cotton and John for a while. Um, but of course, they're gonna have to like re team up. And I think also even a stronger d divide because 
um, John's going to be saying, like, oh, she's a witch, and Cotton's going to be like, she is not a witch. I killed my father on her, and he's not going to be able to accept that because he killed his father, you know, on behalf of she's not a witch. So that's going to um, that's going to be difficult for them to uh, to come to terms together. I like it. And maybe that's Cotton will be the one rescuing, you know, picking. He'll yeah. just let them both go. Like, I can't deal with you guys anymore. <laughs> he's just going to pick Gloriana. Yeah, he's gonna That's have his hands is. full. That's how it's gonna end. It's gonna end just like Django Unchained. Like Gloriana and Cotton are gonna be on a horse spinning and trot off into the sun. Oh so. lord, wow. I, I can guarantee that is not how it was. <laughs> <laughs> so remember, guys, if you are watching on YouTube or if you're listening on iTunes, go on the YouTube version, or you can always tweet us. We'll give our Twitter handles out in a minute. But tell us your season two predictions. We would love to hear what you guys think for season two and what you thought of season one. So with that, last question for the three of you, final thoughts on season one. Great show, right? Great show. I mean, for, for a, new, a new original programming show, especially for such a small network, I mean, it really has a lot of potential. It really I, does. I, I loved it. Loved it. And I know you did American Horror Story Coven, and that used to be, like, my favorite because I'm really into witches. But I think Salem topped it. Yeah, it was a great show, and... Um, I, I mean, way to go, WGN, to, like, for this to be their, their baby with, mm -hmm. uh, with their first original programming. They just, like, it was so well done, not only with story, but um, just uh, it was shot so often like a, like a movie, like a real horror movie. They just poured funds into it. So it was great. It was a great show. I'll be back. I liked it. We'll definitely be back for season two. If you're a WGN fan, watch Manhattan because we will definitely do that show in season one. I know all the four of us have a ton of stuff going on. So with that, guys, thank you for joining me for season one. Thirteen unlucky episodes, I guess, as it were. <laughs> Twitter, Instagram, Jesse Owen, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Miss Jesse Owen. You can follow me at Koppel for Mayor, K-O-P-P-E-L-F-O-R-M-A-Y-O-R. -E what is the status of that mayoral race? Have you won or lost yet? Because it's been 13 weeks. It's She's up in the polls. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you can follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at Serafini TV. If you also like another dirty, gritty show, I also will be covering Hemlock Grove on Netflix. There you go. You can find me on Twitter at Bobby Demuro, on Instagram at Mr. Bobby Demuro. Jesse and I do Kardashians together, which has nothing to do with Salem, but if you like <laughs> if you like witches, well, the Kardashians are kind of similar. <laughs> I'm just teasing. Guys, thank you very much for watching us on Season 1. We really appreciate all the comments, all the pictures, all the interaction you guys have given us. It's been great. On behalf of these three, we really appreciate it. We can't wait for Season 2. We will see you then. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.